Section 5.1, Introduction to Polynomials and Polynomial Functions. We've already used polynomials in this course without labeling them as such, so let's develop some vocabulary to go along with these polynomials. The first one is a term, and a term can be a number, a variable, a product of numbers and or variables, or a quotient of numbers and or variables. And there's some examples, a number, a variable, a product, here's another product, or a quotient. A term is a product of constants and or variables. It is called a monomial And it's a term can include division by a variable, whereas a monomial, a special type of term, does not include division. So all of these examples here, with the exception of the last one, would be monomials. We can't have division in a mon monomial. A polynomial is a monomial or a sum of monomials. If it has two terms, it's called a binomial. And a polynomial with three terms is called a trinomial. The other things we want to define here is the degree. And by definition, the degree of a term is the number of variable factors in that term. The degree of a polynomial is the term of highest degree. So after looking at some of this vocabulary, let's see if we can put it to use. And in this first set of problems, they're asking us to identify the term or terms. <clears throat> there is only one term, so the term here is 3x. The degree, by definition, is the number of variable factors. This is understood to be to the first power, so the degree is 1. The leading term, well, since there is only one term here, the leading term is going to be 3x. They're asking for the coefficient of the leading term. The coefficient, unless they specify some parameters, is understood to be the numerical portion of the term, in this case the leading term, so we would say the coefficient is 3, and the type of polynomial, since there's only one term there, we would call this a monomial. In this next example, they're asking us to identify the terms. Here would be one term, and there's another term. The degree is the number of variable factors in that term, here's the variable, it's to the third power, so this has a degree of 3. There are no variables there. We could put 1, x to the 0, which is um, equal to 1, and it has no degree, so a constant term has no degree. And since we have a polynomial here instead of just the monomial, the degree of the polynomial is the term of the highest degree. So the degree for this example is going to be 3 since the highest degree term is 3. The leading term is the term with the highest power. So our leading term is going to be negative 2x to the third power. Its coefficient is the negative 2. And they're asking us for the name of this. Since it's a two-term polynomial, we would call it a binomial. Here we have another example asking us to identify the terms. There's one, two, three, four terms here. They're asking us for the degree. It's a constant term. It has no degree. This is x to the first power, so its degree is 1. The only variable here is x, it's to the second, so it's a second degree. And here the degree of this term is 3. The overall degree, though, of this polynomial is the highest degree of any one term, so the degree of the polynomial is going to be 3. They're asking us for the leading term, that would be the term with the highest power, so that's our leading term. Next, they want to know what the coefficient of that leading term is. There isn't a number here. The implication is or implied that it has a coefficient of 1. 
And because of the fact it's a plus here, it is a positive one. And once we go beyond three terms, we just default with the generic polynomial as far as the type that this one is. One more example identifying <clears throat> the different components. They're asking us for the terms. There's one, two, three terms. The terms are separated by an addition or a subtraction. They're asking us for the degree. The degree of this term is the number of variable factors. So we have an x to the second and a y to the second. So our degree is 4. We have x to the first, so this would have a degree of 1. This has a degree of 0. So the overall degree will be 4, the term of the highest degree for the polynomial. The leading term, because it has the highest power, is here. The coefficient, similar to the last problem, we don't see one, but the implication is 1. And last, what type of polynomial? There are three terms, so we would call this a trinomial. Since we've developed some of our vocabulary and have looked at some examples, we're now going to take a look at adding and subtracting polynomials. So they're asking us here to combine like terms. And we can either use the word like as here, or sometimes different authors will use the word similar. Similar terms have variables to the same degree. And in this case, this one has only x. This one has x since they're both to the first power. These are similar. You can think of this as two apples plus three apples. We add our coefficients and give us a 5x. We could pull out the coefficient is essentially what we're doing on each of these terms and performing the operation indicated. They are asking us to uh, write our answers in descending powers. Well, there's only one term, so it isn't applicable here. In this next problem, they're asking us to combine like terms. We're looking for variables or terms that have the same variables to the same powers. And here we have terms that are similar. Be sure you pay attention to the coefficient and the sign in front of that coefficient. So what we have here when we combine these, we have a negative 6 minus 3x to the second. Using the rule of subtraction, we can turn that subtract 3 into plus a negative 3. So a negative 6 plus a negative 3 gives us a negative 9x to the second power when we combine those. These other two terms are similar. They each have x to the first power. We have a implied negative 1 plus 2. Negative 1 plus 2 leaves us with 1x, or just simply x. And here, if they're asking us to arrange this in descending powers, we need to do some switching around. This is actually increasing as we go from left to right with first and second powers. So decreasing powers, we'll put our minus or negative 9x to the second power and then our x to the first power following it. In preparation for subtraction, we have a problem here that's asking us to write two equivalent expressions for the opposite of this polynomial. But before I do that, if I had 8 and I ask you to write the opposite of that, you would most likely answer negative 8. If I had negative 15 and I ask you for the opposite, you're going to take the negative of a negative and would answer 15. So the easy answer for the opposite of this expression would be to put a negative in front of this expression. We're taking the opposite of this thing. They're asking us for two equivalent. And what we could do is this minus sign here is shorthand for actually a negative 1. We can distribute that across the quantity in the parentheses. Negative 1 times negative 6 is 
x squared. Negative times negative is a positive 3x, and negative 1 times positive 9 is negative 9. Now, I got there by doing the distributive, but I could have looked at the original polynomial and simply taken the opposite of each sign. And at some point, you probably do skip the distributive and just go for the shortcut of the opposite of a quantity is changing every one of the signs. So my two equivalent expressions would be a negative out in front of the quantity or having each one of the signs changed. So hold on to that thought. When we hit a subtraction, we'll see where we can use that. Right now, though, we're going to add polynomials. You always have to think order of operations. Can you simplify inside the parentheses? There are no similar terms in either case. We're adding, so essentially the parentheses is just showing us we're adding a trinomial and a binomial. So the parentheses have dissolved, and now we're looking to combine like terms. We have a minus 3y squared, minus 2y, plus 5, plus 2y, plus 7. And combining those like terms, there's no other term with a y to the second power. So we can't do anything as far as simplifying that. The next term, just going from left to right, we have a y to the first power. And here's another similar term. Looking at the coefficients, though, we have a negative 2, making sure that you pick up that sign, plus 2, which, when you add those together, give us 0, y, or cancel one another out, leaving us with a plus 5 plus 7, which are constant terms and similar, that we can substitute in a 12 in its place. In this next polynomial operation, they're asking us to subtract a quantity. Again, just a quick inspection if you can do anything inside the parentheses. We always want to be cognizant of the order of operations. But next, what we're going to do is, if you think about what we just did problem before last, looking at an opposite, if I block out that first term there, it's essentially asking us to take the opposite of this quantity. So we can either think of this as plus a negative 1 times each one of those quantities, or simply taking the opposite of each one of those terms. And it's based on the rule of subtraction. When you have subtraction, it's the same as plus a negative. So I'm going to turn this into plus a negative and distribute that. My first term, nothing changes. But the opposite of a negative x, or negative 1 times negative x, gives us a positive x. The opposite of negative 2 is positive 2, or negative 1 times negative 2 gives us a positive 2. By changing the signs, we can now add the quantity that's being subtracted. And addition is always much easier and more palatable than subtraction. Looking to combine similar terms, 2x plus x, and that would be a 1x results in a total of 3x. Our constant terms, we have a negative 2 plus 2, which cancel one another out. So our final answer is simply a 3x. In this next problem, we have a subtraction of a quantity again. And using your rule of subtraction, or take the opposite, essentially is what it's asking us to do, we'll leave the first polynomial as is. There's no sign in front of that to alter anything. And whether you think of this as a negative 1 times each one of these quantities, and you use the distributive property, or simply take the opposite of each one of those, either one is equivalent. So a negative 1 times 4x squared leaves us with a minus 4x squared. Negative 1 times a positive x leaves a negative x, and negative 1 times negative 5 is a positive 5. And if you look, every one of these terms that were in the parentheses and being subtracted change the sign to the opposite of what they were. Once we've taken care of the signs, then we don't have to worry about subtracting not only this, but this and this, and that's where we tend to 
uh, generate some errors by not changing the signs right up front. Now it's virtually an addition combining our like terms. Here we have two terms that have x to the second power. 3 minus 4 or 3 plus a negative 4 leaves us with a negative 1x squared. Next, we have an x to the first minus x to the first. These are opposites. They cancel out, and it leaves us with a plus 2 plus 5, which we can simplify for a 7. This last one is kind of a super size me combo problem. We only use the opposite when it's a subtraction of a quantity. And in this problem, we're adding this binomial. It's not going to be impacted. This is an implied addition. It's only here that we need to take the opposite. And then we can go forward and treat this as though it's all an addition of polynomials. So we, the 5x plus 2 isn't going to change. The opposite of x squared is a negative x squared. The opposite of 8 is negative 8. And if you prefer, you can treat this as plus a negative 1 and distribute those. This is plus this quantity. They aren't similar. There's no operation to simplify inside the parentheses, so we'll disregard the parentheses. Now, as we're adding these up, and if we're headed for the, re the requirement that they're in decreasing powers, and I've kind of been doing that all along, I'm going to start with the highest powered terms. Again, making note of the sign in front, this is a negative 1. And if you're struggling with, is it a subtraction or a negative 1, any subtraction, and let me show you here, any subtraction can be changed into plus a negative by using the rule of subtraction. So yes, this is a negative 1, and yes, it is a subtract 1x squared. Simplifying then negative 1 plus 3 by combining these like terms, we end up with a 2x to the second. The next lower power of our variable is here. We have a 5x plus a 7x, which will add up to be a 12x. And last, we have a plus 2 minus 8, or as I've changed it, plus a negative 8. The larger is negative, and the difference is 6. So you can either express that as a minus 6, or you may have turned that into plus a negative 6. Again, these are interchangeable using the rule of subtraction.